What's up, dude? I've been looking at you. <laughs> what up, sir? How are you? Great, how are you? All right, so we've been talking about it. It's finally upon us. Shoeseum is going to be no more. That's right. It's all coming apart. You can get them all in your auctions. Just search Shoeseum and eBay. But I wanted to see what was here first, A, so I could get a head start on all you bidders, especially all y'all in size 11 and 12. But we have to share what is here and really showcase, because there's so much more than just, everybody knows about the expensive shoes, the high-end ones, what everybody's talking about, but there's so many gems in here, and so many themes, and so many things that I don't think anybody else in the world really has or can come together, so I kinda wanna share those stories before it all goes away. So we're gonna take some time on this video right here. So I took about 400 pairs from the Shoeseum, set them up for you, converted my apartment into a mini Shoeseum. We're gonna start right here with a pair of Air Mags from Back to the Future. Only 1,500 of these came out. We know they're coming out in 2015 with the power laces, but I wanna give people a chance to get the 2011 pair. So my love of shoes started with the pumps, with the Reebok pumps and the Nike pumps. So here's an OG pair from 1989. I remember when Dominique Wilkins. The pumps actually Wilkins. worked in oh, these yeah. and they had real air and you could actually really feel them. You know, it's crazy. The big innovation of Nike Air in the midsoles of the shoes and Nike and Reebok were trying to put air in the upper of the shoes and that's how the pump came about. So we've got Command Forces. I mean, these are OG David Robinson pumps from Dude. 1990, 91. They're meticulous, pristine. I paid more than $3,000 for each of these pairs and I looked for them for years. And then Nike started retroing the pumps, but like you were saying, they don't pump anymore. It's just for looks. Although we're gonna have real pumps coming out in the winter. The Command Force is coming out in five different colors. Wow. So I wanna travel through a world of shoes with you. Yes. Take your passport. I see passports literally right here. Oh. US and UK passports. And then down here, we've got dunks inspired by international taxis. Tokyo and Hong Kong, and you can see these little gloves right over here for the driver to wear. Well, I wanted to talk Oregon, and that's where Nike got started at the University of Oregon. Phil Knight and Bill, Bill Bowerman partnered up. Wow. Phil Knight's nickname is Buck. Yeah, I was wondering, I saw these, and I didn't know what the Buck was for on the back. Yeah, I used to think it was money, and yeah. the shoe's green, but Buck but is Phil Knight. Some people might think it's for the Milwaukee Bucks, they're old colors. True. Uh, waffle Trainer, pre-Montreal. You got the waffle soles on here, which was Nike's first big innovation in the early 70s. These are retros, of course, but I love the early stuff. Wow. And then over here, these are Air Zoom Haywards. Hayward Field is the track where people run at the University of Oregon. Would explain the name. So these really pay tribute to where Nike got started. So that's what I love that you're gonna get from this video, all these random facts and why shoes are called different things, because I'm a pretty big sneakerhead. I've been collecting for a long time, and I don't even know some of these things, so. Every Sp shoe has a story. Speaking of my foundation, I grew up in Minneapolis. I got my first shoes at the Mall of America. I got my first love for all that. And I see, what do we have down here? Yeah, we gotta take this More out. More recent release. So for a while, this was just an unreleased sample and everyone wanted it, but then they made it as a general release. And you know, it's only a $150 or $200 shoe, but boom, you put it right next to the state bird of Minnesota as a mailbox and it just brings it to life. I know you know about this. Whoa. Metallic black sample, Air Jordan 1, completely unreleased. Damn. And you can compare it with the Chicago Bulls Air Jordan 1, which is the shoe that he wore the most during his rookie season. Are these still the OGs? OGs. These are in remarkable condition for some ODs. I OGs. know, they really are. Wow, what is the, the secret? A lot of people always ask me, what is the secret for keeping shoes stored well, in good condition? And uh, these don't have any real, like, yellow, like very mild yellowing. Yeah, you know, keep them in their box in something that's not, in a room that's not too hot or too cold and yep. not moist and don't touch them a whole lot, you know? A shoe yeah. like that, I'm afraid of it. Yeah, that's why you grab them at the bottom. You don't go and put your hand all over Yeah, you always want to touch the midsole and the outsole of the shoe yeah. and just kind of hold it like this. This is the P-Rod J-Rod, and it's the first signature shoe for P-Rod, Paul Rodriguez. He was the first professional skateboarder that signed with Nike. And you can see the elephant print on the upper, the Jumpman logo. For a long, long time, Air Jordan and Nike SB were very, very separate. But we know now that yeah. there's actually Jordan SBs. This is the Mexican blanket edition, the Serape. No two shoes are alike. They actually cut up Mexican blankets for the toe boxes and the swooshes. When you look at 
the left shoe next to the right shoe, you can see that they're very different. The Rejuvenates were metal stand winners. There's yeah, pull out the Rejuvenates. That's an interesting shoe to me. Yeah, so it's called Rejuvenate because it's made for athletes to rejuvenate their feet after the game. These were made specifically for Olympic athletes in the 2008 Olympics in Beijing. And so Kobe and LeBron and Michael Phelps, when they were accepting their medals, they really were wearing dope. these with matching windrunners. And I have the windrunners too. That's awesome. I picked these up at clearance stores, Nike clearance stores. They would just send their scraps of the really wow. limited stuff and they were super cheap. And you just, you won't find this anywhere. Wow. And it's an underappreciated shoe. It's might, it might be a shoe that sells for hundreds of dollars, but real sneakerheads will know what it is. This is a shoe that sneakerheads really sleep on. They're Dude, not I still all have my originals them. and I still wear them all the time. Love them. I mean, this was this like- This colorway? Huge innovation right here. It took a team of scientists 14 years to develop Nike Shocks technology. Why don't they use Shocks anymore? Well, they still make them. They're just not as popular as Air. Yeah. Um, even though the people at Nike would say that this is like the number two big innovation as far as like wow. comfort and cushioning. And this is the OG color. These Air Force Twos are awesome. The Dirty Edition, this is inspired by the Atlanta Hawks, the colors of the old school Hawks yep. with like Dominique Wilkins. And then this is the Espo. And Espo is Steve Powers, a graffiti artist. And this is one of the first collaborations that Nike ever did with artists. There's like artist series shoes with yep. Eminem and Espo, Halle Berry, Pharrell has one. So this is cool. And you can see that it's, it's totally clear. Yeah. So this is when pigs fly. And I swear, I used to tell myself, I'm never selling my shoes, only when pigs fly. And here I am selling them. Here and they holding are. the when pigs fly shoe. But this is the really limited one that was a collaboration with Concepts. It comes Shout with the out there extra Boston. pieces. Very cool. Yeah, they killed it right there. And I have these in the regular just SB box, but they made a limited amount in these crazy packaging concept edition boxes to sell there. Most recently they did it with SBs. the, the, the Christmas, Christmas sweater. Ones. Yep. I think you picked those up, right? Yeah. I think I remember you wearing them on your show. These are the olives. Dunk Low Pro just before Nike SB with that fat tongue right there and these fat laces. I put some plain Air Force Ones in the background so that we could sort of contrast yeah. them with I these think, bright But those colors. were the classic ones. You used to have to go buy a couple of those every summer. I remember the days. How about that pair? Do you remember seeing these ones up close? You're I didn't the realize they had the snake skin all midsole. the way through the midsole. I mean, that's just like the coolest year of the Crazy. snake that's shoe. That's awesome. Interestingly, it's called the Air Force One Downtown. Lower profile. Exactly, but everyone calls Air Force Ones Uptown. Uptowns. So it's like weird that- It was Nike the Harlem version, because the Harlem, they wanted to go downtown with it. These are ridiculous. Mark Smith Laser, you can see 94 of just 200 produced. Wow. Cashmere is the colorway. It says 12 here, because they're a size 12. These are very slept on. Blazer was the first high top basketball mm -hmm. shoe ever. And this is the Paul Brown well, it's color. It's crazy to think, first off, that this is a basketball shoe. Mm -hmm. How the hell do you wear this playing basketball? Like, I can't ball out in like a Jordan 4 that I'm wearing right now. George Gervin used to wear these. It said crazy, Iceman right? on the back of his. Yep. Paul Brown is the color of the first Dunk SB High, the first Trainer SB High, and the first Blazer SB High. And this is right before that. They did a Paul Brown blazer and a paul brown sb blazer so wow. this is like almost like a dunk low pro but to blazers over here is the unlv inspired be true to your school pack i had all seven of the dunks Until when you were be in vegas right school. yeah and this was the first one that you would see because you're yeah. in vegas and it faded from red to yellow it was unlv st john's syracuse iowa michigan kentucky and villanova wow. in that order wow. And then the dunk highs, we've got the patent leather black. Sick. I Makes still got these ones, the I think. Jordan 11. Love and I put shit. those next to the patent leather Sheets. Air Force One Sheet. Yeah, when these came out, these were so desirable. And they were like, because Rashid was always wearing these crazy Air Force Ones. And it was before the mainstream, I'd say, explosion of the Air Force One. But when the Air Force One was blown up underground, it, I still got two pairs of these, I think, just an all-time classic. In the Shoeseum, there were all these Air Jordan retros, and then right next to them were the Jordan Dunks. So you could yeah. see the Jordan, and you could see the Dunk. And, you know, that right there, you can hold it right next to the Jordan 3. And these were actually all called Dunk CLs. CL was... means classic, that it was inspired by a classic Nike. Exactly. So these were the shoes that first really captured my attention. I just got into shoe collecting, and I remember 
when the Air More Tempos came out, specifically the black and white ones, these exact shoes right here. And you can see the big air bubbles as compared to the, the retros that have the smaller ones. But this shoe, when this came out, especially because it was the cheaper version of it, this was the full Max one. They had the cheaper one that said air, but just had the one little air bubble. Air more tempo and air much tempo. There Which we is go. weird because much is more than more, but right? in Nike That's why Air, I was it's less. But just an iconic shoe. I still wear my white ones all the time. Scotty Pippen wore them. Juwan Howard wore the white ones with a yeah. teal air bubble. Everybody could call them the Air Pippins, you know, at the time. And it was right before they gave Pippen his own signature line of shoes. The Air Alpha Force 2. That was 1988, Charles Barkley, before he had his own line of shoes. I was telling you, like, some of the early CB ones came in, but I remember Barkley wearing these ones. It's 93. Kid, so. This is great. Actually, grab a 180 because you're closer to it. You know, the air bubble was always getting bigger. So here it's 180 because you could see air 180 degrees around. Oh, wow. Here it's actually 270 where you can see air 270 oh, degrees wow around the heel. So back in the day, the air was getting bigger and bigger. And really, you know, before we move away from this top shelf, mm -hmm. this right here is a really good dichotomy that Nike did in the late 80s and early 90s where there was force and there was flight. Guards quicker, power forward centers, people playing harder, right? More it, air cushioning, more for speed. Lighter, a little lighter weight, a little more cushioning. Yeah, so the Air Jordan 4 was the first one that said flight. The Flight 89 looks a lot like the yeah. Air Jordan 4, and then this was the traditional Air Force yeah. logo. It's crazy, and that's kind of how they separated, even in through the 90s. And the crazy thing is, nowadays, it's so different. Like, it's a big one. player can wear, look at Kevin Durant. I mean, the guy yeah. is a beast, and he wears a little yeah. low-profile shoe. And then you look at shoe. LeBron, where he could play, and you can consider him either of those, power or speed. And, and then Kobe's got these big boot-looking <laughs> yeah. shoes. The moon boots, crazy. Every, Everything's different now. Speaking of Kobe, I see some ones. Yep, the 81-point edition. He didn't actually wear those in the game where he scored 81, but Nike shortly after the game came out with these and called them the 81 points. It's a little target. Yeah, which you only see on this edition. And next to that is the Derek Eddie Fisher Eddie. Tempo shoe. Dude, I love these Tempos. These were such a great shoe. I remember I actually have a signed game worn pair in Timberwolves colors that Garnett wore. Mm. This is what he wore his first year. He wrote all over them. He wore, he, I remember he'd wear these in the Wolves colors, the white and black Concord 11s, and he'd write on his shoes at the time. That was his way, he'd write KG, so. These, these, I picked them up at Flight Club. I couldn't believe that they had an Dude, original pair from 97. I still have a couple of the original Air Foam Posit ones. I have the first retro, which actually didn't come out that long after. They came out a couple years yeah. later in these, but uh, the crazy thing about these shoes, they hold up pretty well over time, especially mm -hmm. the foam posits that I've had, but just like this was the first foam posit pro and pippin actually speaking of pippin pippin actually wore these because you know at the time the only other one out was the all blue ones that were right. for penny and those were the the foam posit ones with the penny logo on it this was the the pro which was made for the other players so these shoes are signed by john jay the st louis cardinals okay. world series champion he visited the shoe museum i said sign your favorite pair this was them he's from miami sure. um so great story about this shoe it's called the preheat and the reason why it's called the preheat is because it was made for LeBron before he played his first game as a member of the Heat. Wow. So preheating the oven, preheating for the Miami Heat. And of course it's got the colors of Miami Vice. Yeah. And this was the first LeBron shoe to just soar in value. Dude, I remember when that came out, it like changed the whole game. Because before, LeBron didn't have always necessarily that great of respect in the shoe world. And then over here, Miami Vice inspired Air Max 95s. So clean. Look at that logo on the tongue that says Miami. So over here we've got about 100 pairs of Air Maxes on top and below the table. They're in chronological order, starting with the Air Max 1 in 87, the Air Stab in 88, the Air Light in 89, the Air Max 90. So, you know, just follow through the years. The Air Max 90, I mean, they've done so many things with different versions of this shoe. This rack next to me actually is 15 different versions of the same. I, th I swear I have probably 10 different versions of the infrared from the Hyperfuse, but these ones are a little bit different than mine. You have a good eye. Those are the Crooked Tongue Barbecue Edition. Very, very limited shoe. It was given away in a lottery in the UK. Um, I think it was on Labor see, Day. And if you the look box. in, yeah. CTBBQ 2011. So over here, we've got 15 pairs of shoes from DJ AM's collection. Mm -hmm. He passed away in 09 and his family auctioned off his yeah. world-class collection. Was Legendary. 868 pairs of shoes hit eBay every night, 25 pairs hit and sneakerheads everywhere were all over these shoes. Um, 
these are 15 pairs of shoes that are really, Let's really tough around. to get. Um, right here is one of just 95. It was a collaboration with Blends, which is a sneaker boutique in Southern California. And it's another Crazy. ID shoe. And then over here, Air Max 9360 from the one time only pack. That's wow. the clerk's edition. Crazy. And these again are all AM shoes. They come with a certificate, certificate of authenticity. authenticity. Breaking down what they are. I'm going to be auctioning all of these shoes. Off. Every shoe in wow. here is going to hit eBay. I love these. These were some of my favorite shoes. I still have a couple yeah. pairs of those. Beautiful colors on there. You got to tell me about this shoe because you were telling me that you have one. Yeah, I have a pair similar to an event. There was it wasn't the all white ones, but they let you actually customize a pair, and they actually gave you the the uh, dog tag with it. So I have mine that says DJ Ski with it. But I don't know if this was from that same one or a different one. But I remember I made mine with white. He did a classic colorway. His are actually better than mine, but mine were white um, with the turquoise and a couple other crazy colors into them. I'll take some pictures and show you, but um, definitely a crazy shoe, especially with the premium leather. Over here is another cool Air Force One. This is the Supreme Edition, and it's got no stitching on here, so it's seamless. Sick. And they actually made the laces out of a material that doesn't bleed, so you can and wear them with dark jeans. Look what you get on your lace tips. Yeah. And these actually screw off because you can't screw them through the lace holes with it. So the laces you actually have to screw off before you put them through the lace holes because they're too thick. Then when you're all done, voila. The beginning moments pack. Yeah. Uh, this shoe was actually very ahead of its time. There was no crazy colored Air Jordan 1s that were being retroed before this. Yeah. Uh, when the Air Jordan 1 first came out, they made 23 different colors of the shoe. And nowadays they're retroing a new one every, every day. Every, every Air Jordan that comes out comes out with a 1 inspired by it's nuts. that Air Jordan. Uh, we got waffles up top. The first big Nike innovation was the waffle sole. So about a dozen pairs of waffles. Over here is a Terminator that I don't even remember these. Inspired by Andy's Mint, the after dinner chocolate and mint. And this is mints. one one pair. Milk and cookies, um, Oreo fours, fives, and sixes. The fives came out pretty recently. It yeah. was a Black Friday release last year. The fours came out in '99, and they hit the outlets. Like, I passed on them. I actually, one of my favorite shoes, if you follow me, is the Columbia fours, which are all white with the the navy, navy blue, and, and the then the Columbia, blue. the baby blue on them. That they're finally coming back out with. But I remember when these dropped, everybody was like, "I didn't even like them at the time." And to tell you the truth, I'm still not a huge fan of these. I totally to agree with you. Own. And you know, they just leaked information that they're going to be retroing them next year, and everyone's like crazy about it. I don't know. Another shoe that I like, but a lot of people passed on at the time. So this is the year of the six, but so was 2010. In 2010, they made all sorts of sixes. And the crazy thing is, you know, we just had the champagne and cigars that celebrate the championship. Back in 2010, yeah. there was a Bulls six, a Lakers six, and a Pistons yeah. six because they beat the Pistons, then the Lakers, and then they won yeah. the championship. So crazy. This is a very rare shoe. There's 180 of these in the world. It's called the Milk Crate Blazer. There was a guy named Jeff who worked at a milk processing plant and he left and opened up a sneaker boutique. So they said Jeff That's is missing. Sick. Uh, I had this on display with milk cartons That's and really cool. cookies everywhere. It's crazy how sick. you have so many shoes, but they're more nostalgic to others. Yeah. Like you share this and you never know what it is that'll strike a chord with somebody. And the great thing and the reason I love this collection is it's not about, yeah, you have you know some of the more exclusive expensive shoes which we're, we haven't even touched the surface of we're about to get into a sec in a second but you also have just like cool colorways that are forgotten about that aren't going to sell for a ton of money but that are just classic and that mean a lot to people that grew up in that era so over here wow. is the bathroom with nikes inspired <laughs> by hygiene products yeah, he's got crazy. the bic razor you know the logo <laughs> on the bic is yellow and black yeah. so yellow and black dunks I love these ones. The high hair, inspired by big hair bands of the 80s, Bon Jovi. Uh, that was designed by Todd Bratrud. And the inspiration is Aquanet. So you can see that it's That's got that sick. same mesh that looks like the netting love from these. Aquanet. And then over here is the Hygiene Pack, which is Old Spice. And this is the old school colors of Old Spice, like when Charles Barkley was doing the commercials. People call this the peacock, but in actuality, it was inspired by 4711 Cologne. Wow. And then the Brutes. This shoe took off in popularity because of the Hunters and also the Skunks, of course. So wow. it's like the third high top green SB. These are crazy. <laughs> These are 
called Bloody Gums, and the inspiration is Aquafresh. Wow. But it's supposed to look like gingivitis on the outsoles of the shoe. I gave my brother a pair of these because he's a dentist. And then over here, these are shoe goo inspired. Everyone's what? favorite fix your shoe stuff. That's sick. The laces are crazy. It looks like the shoe goo when it dries. That's crazy. These are the wet floor dunks. They're inspired by the wet floor sign when you mop, and they were designed by Ian Crazy. Williams, who was a janitor at Nike. Sick, dude. And he did such a good job cleaning that Nike rewarded him by letting him design his own shoe. And then they're next to the Barfs. This shoe is a 2003 SB. People call it <laughs> Barf because it's ugly, but it's actually not ugly, and it kind of looks yeah. like the Paul Brown, which it is really the does. first high top the gum bottom. SB. Crazy. So, you got your Barf, your mop. It's sick. All the hygiene stuff. This is the crown jewel of my collection, and I've never broken it out. I broke it out for you. What the hell is going on? No pun intended. So it took me seven years to complete this set of shoes, and I just completed it within the last month. So let's break off the inspiration before we get to all these behind me shoes. And for those that don't know, talk about what the What the Dunk is. Okay, so in 2007, Nike made a shoe called the What the Dunk, mm -hmm. and it was celebrating five years of Nike SB. And the What the Dunk is basically a mishmash of a bunch of different dunks. And I was inspired to pick up a few pairs of What the Dunks and then to try to pick up all of the bits and pieces that make them up. And wow. some of these are so rare, like so rare, like there's 30 of them in the world. Everyone is brand new in the box in size 11. And I just can't even tell you how much time I spent hunting down each and every one of these. Let's do a brief run through of all these shoes because all these alone are enough. We already know what they what they form, but let's go through the story on a, on a couple of yeah, let's just key ones. Let's start, start in the at back. the top. The City Pack, which is the Tokyo. The Untokyo is not really part of a pack, but again, yeah. I wanted to be thorough. So the Tokyo and the Untokyo. This is supposed to be the all white dunk and it's made out of canvas. It's a blank canvas. Some cool things about this shoe is it has no Nike tag on the tongue or on the heel. It's just a blank canvas. And the value of all these. So these are the ones that I bought for $10,000. And now they're worth? They're worth well over 25 or 30,000. Um, the Untokyo, this is the London. It's gray Classic. because the weather in London's always rainy and foggy. Yep. And this is the River Thames. Over here is the Paris. It's the most valuable of all the shoes here. There's Such one on eBay for $15,000 right now. This is made up by a cut up work of art by a French painter named Bernard Buffet. If you look close, there's his autograph, there's his autograph, there's his autograph. Somehow, some way, I got one that's just signed by him all over. And that's then it says awesome. 1998, and he actually passed away in 1999. Wow, incredible. The pigeon represents New York City. So the city pack is basically Tokyo, London, Paris, New York City. Jeff Staple at Reed Space designed this shoe. He it, says, had a little, it had a little buzz when it came out. Did it ever. <laughs> he said the pigeon is very representative of New Yorkers. Yeah. They're tough. They, you know, you can yeah. chase after them and they won't go anywhere. Uh, what's really special though is actually this pigeon. This is laser etched number two of 30. What? So riots ensued at Jeff Staples store when this shoe released and only the lasered ones were sold out of that store And so this is number two that. How much have you spent on this? Section alone If you had to guess, I've never actually to put it all together But if I had to I would say somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 grand for all these shoes, just right here, not anything else that we've shown in the house. Yeah, just these just, dunks. Just, these dunks. just the dunks that went into the what the dunk. Yes. Wow. But honestly, it was so much more time than yeah. money because these shoes are so rare and they're all new in box in 11. And now 11. somebody can buy this whole pack without having to do the work, they just need the cash. Yeah, it's gonna hit eBay. There's gonna be a reserve for sure. I gotta make sure to protect my investment, but all of these will be available in one shot. So over here, these three dunks were very tough to get. It's the Medicom 1, 2, and 3. Medicom is a Japanese toy company. That's the Medicom Bear and an At logo. Most of these shoes were only sold in Japan by raffle or lottery. This was the second to last shoe that I bought as part of the set. So I found all these shoes and I was looking for the blue denim and the black denim, the blue denim and the black denim. And I would go on eBay so much searching for these shoes that I changed the search algorithm on eBay that if you went and looked for this shoe, it would recommend other shoes That's that I was crazy. looking for because of how much I was looking. 
the 3M Metacom 3. This oh is God. sick. And you know, you hit it with a flash or in the right light and the whole thing Boom. glows. The Jedi was inspired by Star Wars. The laces came from the lightsaber. It's crazy. Over here, we've got hemp shoes. This is the pack of hemps, the 420 release. You got the blue hemp, the red mahogany, and the green bonsai. This was DJ AM's shoe. One of those What the Dunks was DJ AM's shoe. There's only 420 pairs of this, and it's the most valuable of all the hemp's. And then in keeping with the theme of having everything, this is the unhemp, and it's also known as Top Ramen, because yeah. it kind of looks like Top Ramen. And then working our way back, this whole row is the Supremes. Unsupreme, three Supreme highs, and then of course the two Supreme lows over there. Incredible. Here's the Heineken. Um, this was some people's no another grail for most people very controversial They did this without the permission of Heineken and got sued by Heineken But in true Nike arrogant fashion, they made a second Heineken shoe um, This one's actually called the beer bottle pack and it came yeah. out with the shoe inspired by Budweiser Yep. the car hearts are inspired by the workwear like the jackets So that's the shale and the black then you've got the two tweeds as well as the luckies and the unluckies We've got the Diamond Tiffany's, the low and the high, and then the Sea Crystal high and mid. That's another discrepancy over there with the navy blues. Actually, it's Sport Royal Blue, but this is the Boca Junior inspired by a football team, and these are the T19s. The Soul Collector magazine said Boca Junior, the nothing but the truth said T19, so there's everything. This is Daniel Shimizu designed this. He was one of the early Nike SB riders. Next to that, we have the tie-dye collection. The Huff is the one that's actually a part of the pack. That's the high top. Next to it is the tie-dye mid. I just wanted to complete the set. So I know you love your Air Jordans. I had to break out a handful of the best Air Jordans in the collection. We're gonna start over here with my favorite pair. These are game-worn and signed Air Jordan 1s. Letter of authenticity about the signature, and this one talks about them being game worn. Original Air Jordan ones, here's four of them, bread, Chicago Bulls, black and royal, and white natural. And then over here are the first six Air Jordan retros. I remember these in 94, they'd sit on the shelves. 1994, and actually you can even see on this pair, it was marked down from 80 to 59 to 49 to eventually 39. I remember seeing them at the Mall of America as a kid and thinking like, wait, those came out a long time ago, back when I didn't know anything about shoes. I'll tell you something crazy about this shoe. This is the only time ever that Nike retroed the Chicago Bulls Jordan 1 true to form. It's true. Every other one will have a Jumpman logo or it'll be a mid. Or a different texture. I mean, it's just crazy that all the way back in 94, they're 20 years overdue. For retroing how, how the shoe. How do these hold up too? Could you wear these? Oh, I'm sure you could. The quality of the leather, everything on this is just butter. So we saw ones, twos, and threes, and now the Holy Grail fours. It's crazy how much these shoes go for. Now these are both from AM's collection. Yes, they are. Um, the undefeated four, the M&M four. This one has the little Velcro tag that comes off so there, dope. revealing Jordan Rare Air. The only other Jordan with this is the Tour Yellow. You get the M&M &M on this one, of course. Only 50 pairs made in the world, the Encore Edition. So this wow. is a sample prototype of the first Nike ever made. It was handmade by the co-founder, Bill Bowerman, and buried in his backyard. This was uncovered by a utility worker who was trimming trees, and six feet below the earth, I kid you not, this was discovered along with the original waffle iron. Wow. The utility worker asked Bowerman's son if he could have it. He said yes, and the guy ended up selling it to me. Insane. I mean, it all started here, and so you know the. So this is could be one of the, this is one of the first Nikes without question. Yeah, I mean it's a sample prototype. It doesn't even say Nike on there at all, and I want to show so you. So hard. It's crazy to think that. <laughs> so see how far we've come. So Bill Bowerman was experimenting with a waffle iron. This waffle iron actually was from the grand opening of Nike World Headquarters. That's awesome. So you can see right here, typical waffle iron, and what Bowerman was trying to do was create little nubs on the bottom of shoes to grip the ground better. And what he did was he used this to create a mold, and then he would get these rubber soles and put them onto the bottom of shoes. And wow. that's what you have right there in your hand is one of the original shoes that Dude, he hand made. So, you know, it all started here. And actually, I love to match up this 
prototype with the what the dunks because it really shows you just how far oh, it's, it's come. come. Yeah, for sure. You know, 40 something years ago, experimenting with a waffle iron and the creativity, if Bill Bowerman was around today and he could see this, he wouldn't believe his eyes. Crazy. Well, you've done an incredible job amassing this collection. So much so I see this, we can't ignore this in the, in the corner. I saw the Guinness World Records book. This is a certificate showing that you have the largest collection of sneakers. 2,388 pairs. Well, most of them have been sold, and now you probably have a larger collection than that, but honestly, I can't tell you how much it means to get yeah, that awesome. kind of recognition for something that means so much to me. As I've weeded through the collection and been selling it off, half the stuff is like super limited and valuable, and the other half is just general Old releases stuff. that mean a whole lot to me. And a lot of the times those ones are, are more slept on and more rare than the, than the big ones because you can't find them anymore. Right. Jordan, well, I got something for you before we get out of here. Nice. I gotta I got, give you something. I got something for you too. Oh man. Jordan, thank you so much for showing us around. This is incredible. And people can buy all of these shoes that we've shown on display right now. Yeah. Right here eBay. Yeah, just go on eBay, search for a shoeseum. You got some, I'm telling you. I'm gonna go lose all my money on these auctions. But before we get out of here, this is one of your favorite and most prized possessions in your collection. Yeah, so here we have a used pair of Air Force Twos. And these were DJ AMs, and this was the first pair of Nikes that he fell in love with as a kid. Wow. There's videos of him talking about the Air Force Two and how he thought it looked like a spaceship, and he begged his grandma to buy it, Such and a she classic wouldn't. Shoe. And so this is also in the Philadelphia 76ers colors, which yeah. is where DJ AM was from. Crazy. So you know, even though all the shoes in the Shoeseum are brand new, I made some exceptions, like the game worn yeah. Air Jordan, and then the first shoe that AM fell in love with. Now, I posted a picture of these on my Instagram last 4th of July, because it's one of my favorite shoes, too, the Air Force Two, and you've been jamming me up talking about them, so no had to bring way. them down. And the crazy thing is, dude, when you look at these, they're both size 12. I mean, I'm just humbled to be even mentioned in the same sentence with somebody like AM, who, uh, for what he did as a DJ, for what he did as, you know, just a sneaker connoisseur, and did it before it was cool, like, inspirational, and passed away so tragically and for these things to keep his memory living on is great so i'm gonna give you a pair of man these, sign them out you can see it. let's see who's in better condition let's see yours who yours are actually yeah, i kept mine in a little better condition see am really wore his stuff like crazy even the m&ms he didn't care i couldn't have worn those shout out to am for having the courage to do that but these are yours i'm gonna sign them thank you so Get much them out of here Ski posted these <laughs> last year on 4th of July, and instantly I thought of these, and yeah. I asked you for them. I was yeah. like, man, one of these days. Right, these, it's tough to get rid of, but I have a second pair, luckily. I love these shoes so much. Even back when I was broke, I went off and got a second pair. And you can kind of see still the leathers cracking at the same places. Show is about the same as shoe from 12 years ago. The Air Force Two was designed by Bruce Kilgore, who did the Air Force One and also the Air Jordan Two. Yeah. And when you look at the two next to these, they, they look a lot alike. And man, crazy. thank Great you so shoe. much. No I, worries. So I, I'll sign these before we get out of here. And um, my gift. Thank you. To you for showing us around. And I got a gift for you as well. I don't need anything. This is a gift. Just being in this presence of shoes, I'm already Trust happy, me, dude. Bro. Like, you, are you, you kidding me? This. Wait. This, this, this is box is yours. I'm scared. Please. I wrapped it. Oh man. Might take a little while to get into it because I wrapped Dude, it with such anything. care. Come on, I really have no idea what's going on in here. So. But I really want you to have this and I think you should have it. And I want you to tell me about it because I don't even know. So, so I'm guessing that these are the Serato edition Air Force Ones, which came with their own box as you guys can see. Serato is a DJ program that I use and this is basically the ultimate edition. So it comes with the white bag complete with, like it's a white DJ carry bag so you can carry your records. The bag is made of ballistic, which is yeah. the same upper as the Air Jordan 11. This is crazy, yeah. It feels like a Jordan 11, my favorite shoe ever. In here, I mean, get, I, these were so limited, like. I barely looked at them. Here, we wanna yeah. not mess up the box even. So we're gonna open this up. And there you can see, again, very clean, simple shoe. You get the Serato logo. So if you're looking in your dock and your computer, that's the icon that pops up. You get the Serato on the inside. Ballistic upper, incredible shoe. Dude, I've tried to get these so bad. I, this was years ago, like, they came out. What year was it that they released? 07, you can see the sample tag right there, size 11. So these fit me perfectly, because I can fit an 11 in an Air Force. And you'll see it even comes with this whole limited edition Serato package. So this is actually Serato Scratch Live, the program. When you open it up, if this is what I think, yeah, I want to be careful with this. So this is actually, this alone is like $500 in hardware, just pure hardware. 
Then when you open them up, the crazy thing is it's the white box. These only came in black, so they never made this box in white other than this for collaboration. Same thing here with the CD. It's typically a black CD, so it's a whole like special limited edition box. They never sold it, still never came out to this day. All white, just to match that limited edition pack. So not only do you get the shoes, this is actually more valuable and probably rarer than the shoes itself. It's the all white Serato edition. Dude, you didn't have to do any of this stuff. I mean, Thank man, so. if there's a man. person in the world that should have this, it should be you, if not just me. The box I don't even know what it is. Alone. I just bought it because it's Dude, rare look at the and box. cool. I never even saw the front. Wow, Serato Scratch Live, size 11, Air Force. One, 25th anniversary. So there you go. Jordan, thank you so much. I can't, I'm humbled, bro. Thank you, bro. <laughs> My dude. That's how it goes down. Shuzim, go buy all these right now. Actually, don't. I hope nobody sees these and buys them so I can get them better price. <laughs> I'm just honest with you. Uh, congratulations on amassing the biggest collection known to man and uh, keeping this whole shoe culture pure. Jordan Geller, DJ Ski. See y'all next time.